Hello again. I'm back to talk about this week's Doctor Who episode, Nightmare in Silver. Written by Neil Gaiman, this is one of the ones that I have really been excited for. If anyone can do the Cybermen justice, it will surely be him. And wow, he really did deliver. He did exactly what he set out to do, and he made the Cybermen scary again. Cybermen themselves are looking fantastic, and they have evolved. The scene showing them silently moving at super speed was brilliant and quite terrifying, not to mention visually stunning with the mix of high speed and slow motion. However, we only see this once in the episode before they go back to their usual marching formation. I'm not really sure why that is. This actually seemed like a much more effective method and could have surely defeated the others within seconds if they'd really wanted to. Some may not agree with the changes, but let's face it, this is an evolved form of the Cybermen, so it's only logical there will be some changes. They can also rotate their heads 360 degrees and they seem to have the ability to patch themselves up so that they can overcome just about any form of attack. They are brilliantly merciless and definitely very threatening. The voices are very suitably sinister, although they don't really speak that much, and the word delete is not heard once. I also love the Cybermites. The scene where they came out of the Cybermen's eye sockets and were crawling over his face was actually really quite disturbing. The scenes between the Doctor and the Cyberplanet Doctor were really amazing to see. Matt Smith really excelled in his performance here. The notes to the classic Who were really coming on in hordes in this episode. We have mentions to the Moon Base, the Cybermen's sensitivity to gold, even a flashback to all the past Doctors during the Doctor's mental battle with the Cyberplanner. Clara is also on top form. She is without the Doctor for a large part of this episode, but she displays a sense of real authority and intelligence. Doctor's fascination with her is still very plain to see, with only a week to go till the finale when we're apparently going to find out just who or what she is. Roderick Davis puts in a very strong performance as Porridge, who turned out to be the Emperor. He creates a real sense of sympathy and emotion for the character, in a very quiet and unassuming manner. The children are pretty much in the background after the first part of the episode, once they've had their upgrades. They rarely just serve as motivation for the Doctor and Clara to keep fighting. The idea of using the children due to their imagination and their potential is very reminiscent of Remembrance of the Daleks. The ending may have seemed somewhat understated, however blowing up the whole planet was really a very drastic and unavoidable conclusion. All in all, it was a brilliant episode, and it had Neil Gaiman's style all over it. I'd certainly love to see more stories penned by him in the future. Now, of course, we're reaching the end of the series, with the finale coming up next week. I, for one, am certainly dying for some answers, and I really hope that they turn out to be well worth the wait. I'll see you all next week, when hopefully we'll all know a bit more after watching The Name of the Doctor. So, see you all then. Goodbye.